it hurt us. It hurt us a lot. I cried. Some some of my friends cried. He he had a big influence on us. A really big influence. It's no secret that King Vaughn had a lot of influence in Chicago, and that's why almost three years after his tragic death on November 6, 2020, his memory still lives on. From his music to his life on streets, the Chicago rapper is still loved and respected. More recently, disturbing videos of the Chicago legend resurfaced and found their way onto the internet, and they will undoubtedly shock you. Gay video. Despite his death back in November 2020, the Chicago rapper's name continues to trend for various reasons. From his new album to new videos of him in jail being released, King Von remains relevant in the rap scene, even from the grave. The first time Von's name started trending this year was when his manager, 100K Track, teased fans with a new posthumous album from the late rapper. This is, of course, not the only posthumous album from King Von, as in 2022, What Means to Be King, was dropped and peaked at number two on the Billboard 200. The second posthumous album was released in June 2023 and according to sources was projected to sell 28,000 in its first week and debut at number 15 on the Billboard chart. This was not the only thing that got fans and people in the industry talk. Videos of Vaughn in jail back in 2017 surfaced and they generated a lot of buzz. One of the videos that made headlines in the drill rap industry involves Vaughn requesting protective custody while incarcerated due to his alleged sexual orientation. It is widely reported that Vaughn was in jail at the time on a murder charge. The Chicago rapper had been accused of fatally shooting Malcolm Stuckey and wounding two others. In May 2014, King Vaughn and his associate Michael Wade reportedly approached Stucky and two others at a party. Allegedly, Vaughn and Wade began shooting at the victims before fleeing the scene, killing Stucky. In July of that year, the 26-year-old was charged with one count of murder and two counts of attempted murder. However, in late 2017, Vaughn was released after witnesses failed to testify against him. In the leaked video, Vaughn asks for protective custody because he is gay. At one point, he tells the guards that the inmates claim to be Christians but hate gay people. They both be a Christian but they got a problem with gay people. The guard asks Vaughn again whether he is requesting protective custody because of his sexual orientation, to which the rapper says yes. So because of your sexual orientation, you're requesting protective custody, is that correct? Yes. Okay. The clip gets even more interesting as Vaughn starts acting fruity in front of the guard. He waves at a fellow inmate and then blows him a kiss. Bye, Well, that was not the only Fruity Vaughn said in the clip. A few seconds later after the video, he tells an inmate that he'll f them. I'm gonna f you too. Later on, he tells another inmate that they trying to let me suck they They trying to let me suck they So what did Vaughn's fans have to say about this? According to one fan, Vaughn was only playing a role to survive in jail. He played that role and he played it well, the fan posted. You gotta survive in there. According to another fan, Vaughn was just trying to take advantage of the system. He knows how things work in there, so he was just working the system. The fan may be right as protective custody ensures that an inmate is protected from harm by other inmates. If he was in protective custody, he didn't have to look over his shoulder every second of the day. Turns out inmates pull this card a lot to get their own room. But was Vaughn really gay? Did his life on the outside give any hint that he was gay? Well, from all his relationships, there was nothing that pointed in that direction. While in the limelight, the Chicago legend lived as a straight man. His first public relationship was with fellow rapper Asian Doll. Vaughn was often so possessive of her that he even got into a beef with one of hip hop's best NBA young boy because of her. But isn't it nice to have somebody in the same industry as you? No, that ain't, I'd rather have. You know, I wish you, you know, I can't say I wish you wasn't a rapper or nothing like that, but it'd be better if I knew that she's at the house <laughs> Instead of going around all these people that ain't around and damn, I'm what's going on? Now I'm just thinking, are you damn? What the she doing? Why she answer the phone? However, Trouble in Paradise started in May 2020 when Vaughn took to Twitter to subliminally suggest that he and Asian Doll were no longer together. Breakups be the worst, Vaughn wrote. However, the next month, Vaughn tweeted out assuring everyone that the two were still a couple. Me and Asian like this in real life, no internet the rapper tweeted. Vaughn and Youngboy started beefing when the Chicago rapper tweeted, wouldn't believe the female I just made a hit with. Later, photos of him and Youngboy's baby mama, Janiyah, emerged on the internet, with rumors spreading that Jania and Vaughn did not not make music when they met, but rather slept together. Jania took to Instagram to clear her name, stating that they only made music as she was trying to get money for her child. Asian, seemingly angry, took to her Instagram to confirm the rumor. According to her, she had seen the DMs between the two and that the music excuse was a lie. However, the damage was already done. Youngboy had already gotten wind of the rumor and had taken it as disrespect. He posted a photo on Instagram with the caption, I'm gonna make sure my son f your daughter since you trolling 
Well, King Von's public love life showed that he was only into women. In fact, another clip emerged of the same day in prison where Von did not want to be taken to protective custody because Lil J was also there. So who is Lil J? Jeff McGraw, alias Lil J, is a rapper from Chicago. Rumor has it that while in jail, the Chicago rapper had a transgender boyfriend. These rumors surfaced way back in 2013 and 10 years later. Video surfaced confirming the allegation. SG Batman revealed in an interview that he saw all this while he was in jail with Lil J. It ain't even allegation. All this talking about is real. I heard this shit before anybody said that Lil J was sucking in the county, but I couldn't say it because they gonna be, oh, you hate me. THF Crack also confirmed this rumor one year before the video surfaced. We've been hearing a lot of talk about Lil J in the county. Oh, man, man. On transgenders. He let him off stretch his rubber band. What is even more interesting is that Lil J had previously come out denying all these rumors, even before the video surfaced. Another thing too is people were talking about, you know, some tranny or messing with a guy. Let's, let's clear the air on that too. That's like the number one thing people when want to I talk heard about. That, that was the most goofy shit I ever heard in my life. In the leaked CCTV footage, Lil J is seated while another inmate leans over and kisses him. Later on in the video, the same inmate sits on Lil J's lap. The hip hop world was on hand to react to this video. According to Lil Reese, the cat was out of the bag and it was no longer a rumor. No longer a rumor. <laughs> <laughs> This is no longer a rumor, man. However, Lil J put out a statement denying that it was him in the video. Y'all try to tarnish the face, man, he said. Y'all try anything. Face don't match, tattoos don't match, body don't, skin tone. Come on, man, make it make sense. However, a second video leaked where the rapper can be seen choking the same inmate that had sat on his lap emerged, confirming that it was him. Well, he denied it was him. Yeah, I know, he gonna deny it. He, he can't deny it the second time when the other video dropped when he was, when he was choking that motherfucker. Well, it's now no surprise why King Von may not have wanted to be close to Lil J in protective custody. However, people in the industry had mixed feelings about the entire incident. For some, he did what he had to do to manipulate the system, while others thought that he had committed an unforgivable sin in the hip hop community. One of the people who thought this was WAC 100 while on No Jumper. According to him, Von would have been beaten up in the hood for that. If King Von was from your hood, just hypothetically, and beat the f and that, 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 that video came out. And beat the f out, and maxed him out. According to Adam, 22, Wack was being a hypocrite since he had organized a collab involving a snitch. You're, you're being so about strict about these rules as someone who just initiated a, a collaboration between a gangster and a snitch. Adam was talking about the 6 9 and Kodak Black collaboration. However, Von's homie, Lil Reese, had a different take on the incident. According to him, Von had to do that to get moved to a different area. Yeah, I know I know he was playing because he was trying to get moved to a new deck, so that's, that's what you got to do sometime. Birdman's brother, Terrence Gangsta Williams, had a different opinion on the video. According to him, if Vaughn was really about that life, someone would have already exposed him, especially with the level of beefing in Chicago between the BDs and GDs. If he really was living like that, somebody would have been came out and said, if someone was doing this and that with him, they'd have been exposed to that stuff because how they be beefing in Chicago, they be putting all kind of stuff out there. They at right. you. Gangsta Williams had a point. If King Von was about that life, his ops would have definitely made disses of him regarding his situation. As dangerous as prison is, being cunning and using the system to one's advantage can save one from a lot of trouble. As we will see, Von often found himself in many dangerous situations prison violence. Why would King Von, one of the toughest gangsters in Chicago, claim that he was gay to get himself from one part of the prison to another? Well, to answer that, we have to take a closer look at the other videos of the Chicago rapper that surfaced onto the internet. In all the videos, King Von was getting into it with other inmates. In this video, Von can be seen walking up to a fellow inmate and attacking him. As the two trade punches, other inmates intervene and separate too. This interaction is typical of life in jail. Jail fights often break out, sometimes involving a large number of inmates. In some cases, they turn into riots where guards are forced to intervene. Well, Vaughn was not new to that life as he constantly got himself into fights. In many cases, he was the one starting the fights. Another shocking video emerged where Vaughn slipped out of his cuffs and attacked his op. In the video, King Vaughn is seen hurriedly getting up and walking towards an inmate. The two start struggling with their cuffs. After a few seconds, Vaughn can be seen out of his handcuffs and heads towards an inmate. The inmate tries to hide, but Vaughn catches him and starts raining blows on the inmate and knocking him to the ground. Two inmates join in to help Vaughn. Fortunately, prison guards come to the rescue and both inmates are taken out of the bullpen. Well, people were not really surprised when the video was leaked as Vaughn had a reputation of sliding on ops whenever and wherever. According to Lil Reese, he already knew what type of person Vaughn was even out of jail, so he was not really surprised when he saw the video. That's him. That's what, that's what he be on. That's how he moves, so I knew it was true anyway. 
One thing that baffled everyone, including the prison guards, was how the rapper was able to get out of cuffs. You usually don't really see dudes be able to slip out of the handcuffs like that. Yeah, that was crazy. I don't know how he did it, but he did it. Even the guards couldn't figure out how he had slipped out of his cuffs. You could even see that he was cuffed correct. Because you could see the marks from the cuffs on his arm. Turns out that the inmate who was attacked was 051 Freaky. And according to Lil Reese, Vaughn may have jumped his op because he had a disrespectful tattoo of L.A. Capone. L.A. Capone was an up-and-coming rapper closely associated with Lil Durk. On September 26, 2013, while leaving the recording studio around 6 p.m., L.A. Capone went to look for his ride down the street. And as he was walking down an alley near 70th Street and Stony Island Avenue, he was approached by an individual later identified as Lil Mick from 051 Young Money rival member. Having had his his fellow gang member killed was bad enough for Vaughn. However, his op having disrespectful ink on him of his fallen friend was a no-go zone. This kind of rivalry has characterized prison life. And maybe Vaughn was scared of being in the same prison area as Lil J as they were ops. Also, apart from having a reputation of being gay while in jail, Lil J was also known to get into fights and brutally beat up his opponents. But Vaughn is not the only rapper who has been involved in fights in jail. Rappers such as Casanova, Kodak Black, and Money Sign Suede have also found themselves in similar situations. Former New York City rapper who was awaiting sentencing on federal drug charges got slashed in a vicious altercation with another inmate. On June 15th, word got out of Essex County Correctional Facility in New York that Caswell Sr., alias Casanova, had been involved in a nasty altercation with a fellow inmate, leaving him with a nasty wound. Internal reports from correction officers said he was slashed with a blade-like weapon across his face by the said inmate. Internal reports from correction officers say that the rapper then chased the attacker alongside other inmates and retaliated by cutting the inmate's face several times. The attack came only a few days after it was reported that Casanova had asked a judge for leniency by renouncing his association with the untouchable Gorilla Stone Nation Bloods gang. In the letter sent to the judge, the rapper said that he will speak publicly about severing ties with the gang in the future. With the rapper being involved in such incidents, it is no surprise that he took to Instagram to share his worst fears with his fans. He felt that he would die in jail while warning young guys to stay away from jail. Might die here, but always remember what's gangsta cause this jail shit ain't gangsta at all. Hope you young is beat the odd, the caption read. On December 1st, 2020, members of Casanova's gang, the untouchable Gorilla Stone Nation Blood Gang, were hit with a RICO. The charges included murder, narcotics, firearms, and fraud offenses. Casanova was himself charged with conspiracy to commit racketeering, conspiracy to distribute controlled substances, and possession of a firearm in furtherance of a drug trafficking crime. The New York rapper turned himself in the next day after the Fed sent out a tweet and attacked his photo letting the public know that they were looking for him. He surrendered in the most dramatic fashion, not knowing the violence that awaited him in jail, a place he would stay for more than 15 years. I'm going in, baby, I love you like cooked food. You know, I'm a whole gangster, tough dude. I see you soon. I love you like cook food. I love you too. In 2019, Kodak Black was also involved in a brawl that resulted in a prison guard getting hospitalized. The brawl reportedly went down on October 29th, about two weeks prior to Kodak Black's sentencing. According to reports, the rapper allegedly got into a fight with corrections officers while he was on drugs. One guard pepper sprayed the rapper, who retaliated by throwing two punches and then taking a tight grip on the guard's junk. It took four officers to finally restrain Kodak, but it was too late. Apparently, Black had such a firm hold on the guard's testicles that his abdomen and intestinal wall were breached. The officer was hospitalized with a hernia and needed surgery. How had the fight started? Why would Kodak Black, who does not look shredded nor athletic, attack correctional officers? Well, Kodak's camp claimed that the rapper had been set up and possibly drugged when he got into the fight. According to them, someone slipped something in his drink to set him off. Apparently, surveillance video showed Kodak drinking a cup of coffee about 20 minutes before the fight broke out, and his representatives believed Kodak's coffee was spiked with a chemical substance intended to make him lose control. The official reports showed that Kodak got into it with another inmate and a corrections officer sprayed the rapper with mace. It took several prison guards to restrain Kodak, who displayed incredible strength after allegedly being drugged. It was at this point that the rapper grabbed the guard's junk. This was not the only physical altercation that the rapper would have with prison guards. In 2020, Kodak Black was allegedly brutally beaten by multiple prison guards while handcuffed. In the midst of that, it turns out that Kodak had been barred from making phone calls or receiving visitors for six months as punishment for
for getting in a fight while housed at the Miami facility. Fellow inmates at Big Sandy informed Kodak's team of the assault. Kodak's lawyer took to Instagram to share the details of the incident. Friday night, he was badly beaten while in cuffs by seven guards at Big Sandy. They struck him in the head repeatedly with a metal object. Then, after, one of the guards flicked his genitals and said, you're not so gangster now, you're gonna need bigger balls to survive. This just shows that even when fellow inmates are not trying to fight, prison guards are all too willing to stir up some trouble. The rapper has been getting into trouble both in and out of jail and has a very long rap sheet. In October 2015, he was arrested in Pompano Beach and charged with robbery, battery, false imprisonment of a child, and possession of weed. In April 2016, Kodak Black was arrested in Hallandale Beach, Florida, and charged with possession of a weapon by a convicted felon, possession of weed, and fleeing from officers. Just a month later, the rapper was again behind bars after he was arrested in Broward County, Florida, and charged with armed robbery. In 2019, Kodak Black was arrested by United States Customs and Border Protection after border authorities found weed and a Glock in his car. He was charged with third-degree criminal possession of a weapon and unlawful possession of weed. His long rap sheet continued and was even pardoned by former President Donald Trump. This has not stopped him from committing more crimes and getting arrested. However, it is safe to say that his time behind bars was not the most pleasant, and the jail fights that he got himself into are something he may want to forget entirely. While many inmates live to tell the tale about their prison fights, some are not so lucky. One of the most recent incidents where a prison fight led to an inmate's death involved 22-year-old rapper Money Sign Suede, Jaime Brugada Valdez, alias Money Sign. Suede was a fast-rising Mexican-American rapper who met his tragic death in April 2023 in a shower at a California prison. According to reports, the rapper was found unresponsive just before 10 p.m. Prison officials said he was found with injuries consistent with a homicide as he was stabbed in the neck. The rapper was serving a 32-month sentence for a pair of gun charges in Riverside County. He was also facing a gun charge in Los Angeles County, though he had already pleaded and was expecting to receive a two-year sentence. The harsh life in prison and the constant fear of being attacked by one's ops could be the main reason why Vaughn requested protective custody and even protested against being taken to the same prison area as Lil J. To understand why he may have feared for his life, it is important to take a look at the fierce rivalry between Vaughn and Lil J's gangs, the Black Disciples and the Gangster Disciples, gang affiliation. Gangs in Chicago have run rampant, causing death and suffering in the city. The most popular gangs are the Gangster Disciples, GDs, and the Black Disciples, BDs. The Gangster Disciples gang was founded in 1969 in Englewood on Chicago's South Side. After leadership feuds within the gang could not be resolved, the gang would finally split into two sections. This gave rise to the GDs and BDs. The two gangs have seen offshoot groups grow from inside or join their ranks through agreements over the years. The Insane Gangster Disciples and O-Block are two of these gangs. While Vaughn is affiliated with O-Block, Lil J was part of the Insane Gangster Disciples or Tuka Gang. He was also part of the rap group known as the Flyboy Gang, FBG. The two gangs were in constant war as they shot and killed each other. How did the rivalry between the two start? The death of 15-year-old Shondale Gregory, alias Tuka, on January 12, 2011, was the turning point in the gang's history. At about 6.48 p.m., Tuka was waiting for a bus in the 600 block of East 63rd Street when a dark-colored car pulled up on him and a masked gunman shot him to death. The teen was a suspected GD's member, and his assassination signaled the start of a violent battle between them and the neighboring gang, White City. To symbolize their determination to avenge Tuka's death, they adopted names like Tukaville and Tuka Gang. On August 11th, they would exact their vengeance, and what better way to do it than to eliminate Weech City's most cherished O.D. Perry. It is thought that the courageous White City gunman was involved in more than 50 shootings between 2006 and 2011. The legendary shooter had made the territory so dangerous for weak City ops that they were forced to stop coming to the McDonald's just across from Parkway. He had made the area off limits to weak City's ops. OD was slain on the 400 block of East 64th Street, not the 6,400 block of South Martin Luther King Drive, as initially reported by authority. That night, about 11.35 p.m., he was riding his bike when he was shot multiple times, including one to the neck. The two deaths started a chain of revenge-fueled deaths that continue to this day. Chicago has become a war zone resembling the war-torn country Iraq, and it has been nicknamed Chirac. King Vaughn was well-known and feared by his ops, so much so that he has been labeled as Hip, Hop's first serial killer. The O-Block rapper was notorious for sliding on his ops and killing them for fun. Among his most famous hits was on a 17-year-old female assassin from STL EBT. This was none other than Gakira Barnes, alias K.I. The female assassin was thrust into the war after Tuka, who was her close friend, was killed. It is even rumored that it was K.I. who fired the gun that took O.D. Perry's life. This was after she posted photos posing with, with O.D.'s gun, which she had stolen after killing. She even took to Twitter to post about her successful hit. Shout out to O.D. for being target practice. She became a vicious killer on Chicago streets, where she was known as Snoop. The name was 
inspired by a brutal murderer from the fictional TV show The Wire. According to rumor, K.I. had murdered someone by the age of 14 and may have been responsible for up to 20 fatal shootings before she died. However, the daring teenage assassin would soon meet her equal when King Von gunned her down on April 11, 2014, and informed Jay Hood, a close friend of King Von and former O Block member. Von, he claims, approached him, shook his hand, and delivered the horrific news. And then Von walked up to me, and I'm, I shook his hand. He like looked straight. And then I look straight, and I'm like, why? Why, why are you telling me to look straight? He like, look straight, and what I'm finna say to you, don't look at me after I tell you. According to the former O Block member, Vaughn told him that he had shot three people, and that K.I. was the last one of the three he had shot and killed. Why I just run up on K.I., and um, you know, why I just ran up on the and caught, and caught K.I., she was the last one running out of the gate. As soon as Vaughn told him this, sirens could be heard in the distance getting closer. And I'm just in my head like, damn, for real? And sure enough, after he told me that sirens came. K.I. was shot nine times in the head, neck, and chest before running to a neighbor's house and collapsing. She was taken to Northwestern Memorial Hospital, where she died as a result of her injury. That was not the only time Vaughn was involved with ops. This time, he made national news as he was connected in a shooting after he had started his rap career. I just talked to an overnight commander who says the only information they can, they can confirm for us is that a man has been shot and he's been rushed to the hospital. On February 5th, 2019, about 5.45 a.m., shots were fired in the parking lot of The Varsity, a renowned restaurant in Midtown Atlanta. Alexander Weatherspoon, 23, had been shot. Fortunately, customers from a restaurant across the street quickly dialed 911, and he was rushed to the hospital. According to witnesses, an SUV with the word 300 inches written on the side was observed driving away from the site after the bullets were fired. Vaughn would be the first person apprehended in connection with the incident on May 4th, 2019. One of Vaughn's best friends, Lil Dirk, was also charged in connection with the shooting. Although detectives seemed to direct all the blame on Dirk, shocking documents documents released after King Vaughn's death showed that he was the one who discharged the weapon. In a statement released by Mrs. Fonnie Willis, the Fulton County District Attorney, insert pick, if co-defendant Davon Bennett, aka King Vaughn, had not died in 2020, he would have been indicted for this incident. This was not the only deadly shooting that haunted Vaughn from his grave. It was also revealed that he was behind the killing of his rival, FBG Duck. It was a Chicago rapper who was gunned down here on one of Chicago's ritziest streets. They say two other people were also shot when four Four gunmen, witnesses say, jumped out of cars and fired from just a few feet away. August 4th, 2020. News broke out that FBG Duck had been shot and killed at Michigan Avenue and East Oak Street in the Gold Coast area of Chicago. It did not take long for the cops to arrest those who were behind the murder. Five alleged Chicago street gang members now facing federal charges in connection with the shooting death of a local rapper downtown. On October 13th, 2020, the feds raided O Block and arrested five men for Duck's murder. These were Charles Liggins, AKA C Murder, Kenneth Robertson, AKA Kenny Mack, to Carlos Offord, AKA Loss, Christopher Thomas, AKA C Thang, and Marcus Smart, AKA Muwa. So how does Vaughn fit into all this? Well, it turns out that the rapper had put a $100,000 bounty on FBG Duck's head. These details were later revealed by the feds after an informant came forward. According to police reports, someone had put a $50,000 bounty on Duck's head. However, no one was willing to do it, and the same individual had bumped up his offer to $100,000. So how did the feds link this to King Von? The informant came in handy yet again and revealed that the same person had rewarded the killers with custom-made O-Block chains. A video had earlier surfaced on YouTube of King Von giving O-Block members custom-made chains. It is important to remember that these are the crimes that detectives could have used to put King Von behind bars. However, he had committed many other crimes that could not be linked to him. In the documentary by popular researcher Trap Lord Ross titled King Von, Rap's First Serial Killer, King Von was involved in multiple murders. He had become a thorn in the flesh to his ops. It is clear that any chance they would get to get back at him would have been taken by his ops. King Von knew this. His reputation had made him a target even in jail. Perhaps that's why he did not want to be anywhere near his op, Lil J in prison. If you enjoyed this video, click on the boxes playing on your screen to watch similar content.